Good morning, brothers and sisters. This is a video episode just for y'all parents who are trying to uh, have conversations about the blessing with your children, about the matching and the blessing. And this is particularly for parents that have a hard time talking about the blessing with their parents, or with their children. And you're trying to figure out how to navigate these waters, right, in these conversations. And also coming from the perspective and understanding that the blessing is truly important, not just to God, not just to, to your parents, but also to you as an individual that has experienced the blessing yourself and has benefited tremendously in your own life, I hope, from receiving the blessing and you see the power of it. And with that comes the many times uh, immense amounts of pain and feeling confused or hopeless sometimes uh, if children don't want to or have no interest in receiving the blessing or curiosity to understand what the blessing is. And that can be a very stressful situation to be in uh, and sometimes very hopeless. So with that understanding, uh, I wanna offer two perspectives that I think are very helpful for parents. And I've had many conversations recently just in the last week uh, with parents who are going through this uh, kind of dilemma of like, how do I talk about the blessing even though I value it and cherish it, I know it's important, but my children don't, all right? So I'm gonna offer hopefully two helpful perspectives that will be beneficial to you, all right? And so the question ultimately that we're trying to answer is how? How do we talk about the blessing? And I think the short answer, and I'll explain why I believe this, is that you don't talk about the blessing. You talk about the blessing by not focusing on the blessing as the, the focus of the conversation, of your relationship. And the reason I say this is because, let me ask you, if you joined this faith as a first generation, did you join this faith because you wanted to receive the blessing? Almost all first gen that I asked that question to, they say no. They didn't join this church because they wanted to receive the blessing. They actually joined because they were curious to understand something. They had a deep curiosity and desire to understand who God is. What is my relationship with God? And then a further understanding of the divine principle and a mind-blowing revelation of the mission of true parents and the heart of God. And that is why most people that join this faith want to receive the blessing because it's a next natural step. It's like, I understand God's heart so profoundly that I want to receive the blessing no matter what, and I will do anything. All I have to do is pay thousands of dollars. It's a very different mentality, think about it. That's all, all I have to do is get three spiritual children, that's all, all I have to do is a seven day fast, that's all, or 21 day fast, that's all I have to do, and I get to receive this eternal blessing? Sign me up. All I have to do is go to Korea and spend thousands of my own personal money and fundraise for seven years, and I get to receive the blessing? Sign me up. That's a very different mentality. And how does, what is the foundation of that kind of attitude of gratitude, which is the opposite of entitlement, by the way? The foundation of it is like, I just understand the core of it so much so that I will do anything to receive this blessing. So if we approach it from that perspective, it's like, yeah, second generation that drew, grew up in this faith do not have the experience of having a complete 180 conversion experience, but we can have a degree of a conversion experience. And anyone who has received the blessing successfully and has made it a priority to create a blessed family, a thriving, God-centered blessed family, not just receive the blessing, because that's the first step. Second gen who have done that successfully have a foundation of faith, have a foundation of a relationship, an intimate relationship and understanding of God of the blessing and a true parents. It doesn't start with a desire to understand the blessing for most people. For some people, yes, it does that I've talked with. They're just really inspired by the blessing, right? But if we're talking about long-term sustainability and the fundamental reasons that, that cause somebody to go, all I have to do is pay money to get blessed, sign me up. Like, I will do anything for that. How do we get someone to be there? It starts by not talking about the blessing, but talking about the core of it, right? I was having this conversation with a uh, sister, uh, a mother, a few weeks ago, right? And she was asking me, she pulled me aside after church, right? And she asked me, uh, how, how, how can she navigate 
conversation with her son, who is an adult, young adult man, right? And I, and I asked her, you know, uh, is he curious? Does he have a relationship with God? I asked her if she has any relationship. He's like, no, not really. And I said, okay, is, is he curious to understand relationship with God, to develop an understanding of the blessing and who true parents are? And she's like, no, he's rather pessimistic about it. And I was like, well, that's really hard because if you lack the fundamental spark of curiosity as a gateway to understanding things, then it's like swimming upstream. Then there's no room for this man to even understand or have any curiosity to understand who God is in their relationship. And so the root of this issue is not you need to have an understanding of the blessing. It's not that even he doesn't have a relationship with God. That's not the root of the issue. The root of the issue is that there is a negative block, blockage of resentment and anger and pessimism. A constraint that is stopping a lot of people from even considering things that are of spiritual nature, of God. Considering things. Because as soon as they hear the word true parents, this antenna goes on that's triggered, this allergic reaction that constraints them. And it's fundamentally caused by a, an anger, a resentment that's never been released. And it's just sitting in there for years and sometimes decades. And so anytime there's an opportunity or conversation about the blessing, about God, about your parents, this thing goes off and they push back. They react. But there's a reason that they're like that. It's not because, of, because they're evil or wrong or self-centered at all. They are logical men, women, children. They are children of God. They're your children. They have passion. They love. They care. They love you. But there is something in them that has not been released, right? You can call it spiritual. I think this is a misnomer and a false conclusion that pe most people unfortunately come to is that it's all spiritual. I will not disagree that it's somewhat spiritual. I think that spirit, the nature of spirituality is that it's hard to understand. It's hard to understand. And so we can't really pinpoint exactly what it is. But I'm fairly certain that it is not 100% spiritual, which is the trap a lot of people fall into. Like, this must be 100% spiritual and therefore the actions that, that follow are prayer, hundoke, and spiritual conditions. Where in reality, I, I believe it's actually a lot less significant. Maybe like 5-10% of it is spiritual, which is still significant. I'm not saying it's not spiritual. I'm just saying that it's in comparison to the actual issue going on, it's not nearly as big. So what is it? It's more of an emotional issue. There are emotions that people have. There are resentment that people have, anger that people have that just haven't come out. And so if you're a parent in this situation, I would encourage you to, to leave room to give adequate amount of opportunity and conversation to let those emotions come out. You let them come out. You're angry? Okay, tell me. Tell me what's, why are you so angry? Why are you not curious? I've lived, this is, this is honestly, like this is what I would do. It's like, I lived my entire, if I was a parent of a, a child in a situation, right? I have three kids myself. They're all younger though right now. But I am like this to them even though they're young. It's like, I'm your parent. I've devoted my entire life to this. Why aren't you curious? Tell me. And if it, if you need to have a fight about this, if you need to get it out, then do that. Don't be afraid of conflict. And one of the reasons you're in this situation is because of a fear of conflict, fear of a desire to have a open dialogue and conversation about this. And that's what they want. I had an interesting situation, uh, experience, uh, when I was doing a, a workshop in one sub-regional workshop when I was a, in doing youth ministry. And I went to this workshop uh, with like something like 100 second gen. And before I went to the workshop, I had an opportunity to meet all of their parents, which is interesting. I met all of their parents at a uh, another workshop, a separate site, before I went to this workshop, right? And so I asked all the parents, what type of relationship do you want with your kids? Explain to me, guess what they said? Almost unanimously, they said, I want an open, honest relationship, right? An open, honest relationship. And I was like, great. And then I went to the youth workshop with, with their children, the actual children of these parents. And I asked them, what kind of relationship do you want with your parents? Guess what they said? You got it. They said, I want an open, honest relationship with my parents. <laughs> 
And I was like, oh my goodness. Everyone wants the same thing. So what's going on? Is that we don't know how to have those conversations. And there's a lot of fear and emotions that are blocking honest dialogue and confrontational conversation. Sometimes debates and fighting if necessary to get stuff out. But as soon as difficulty comes up and as soon as you bring up the blessing and that negative energy flares up in them, they go, I don't want the blessing, I don't want to go to church. And then you back off. You say, okay, okay, okay. Because you don't want to stir stir the pot. You don't want to stir up the bee's nest. Kick a bee hornet's nest. You want to, don't want to kick sand up. You want to play it safe. It's like, okay, I don't want to. But I would encourage you guys, have these conversations. Be open. And this is, this is where the second point in perspective that uh, I've noticed and I think is a helpful framework to think about is the, net, the necessity of balancing the vertical and horizontal in our relationships with our children. All right? And what I mean by that is let's define the horizontal and vertical. We often think of horizontal as negative. It's not negative. It's ne- ne- necessary in order to create this 90-degree vertical relationship with God that you, your parents talk about. The horizontal is necessary. It's not, it is not a wrong, fallen, negative thing. It is necessary in order to have a foundation to build the vertical. All right? And so when I say horizontal, I mean a relationship of trust and bonding and unity and respect, mutual respect, where we trust each other, we respect each other, and a child knows with utmost certainty that I am loved unconditionally. All right? That's the foundation of trust I'm talking about. And the, and the foundation, the vertical is the teaching, is the education. It's the vor- vertical. It's taking the authority of the parent and saying, I am your parent, I will teach you. And no one else is going to teach you but me. All right? I had an interesting experience with my, my kids, right? Um, in Chumpyang, we were doing Chanyang. Yeah, this was last year. I took my whole family to, to Korea for Chanyang. And then uh, this is our second time doing it while we were there in, Chum- in Chumpyang. And by this time, my kids were kind of like, like, I've done this before. My, my eight, uh, eight-year-old son at the time, he was in the back when we were doing Chanyang. I was, you know, in the middle. And he was in the back just kind of sitting on the wall with his feet sticking out, right? And then I saw him. I was like, okay. And I went back there. And I was like, Kojin, like, let's, let's do Chanyang. Come on, let's do it. Like, we're here. Everyone's participating. Let's do it, right? And then so he's kind of reluctantly doing this. And then I went back. And then I looked back again. And he's back at the back of the wall, standing on the wall like this. He's like, I'm tired. And so I went back again. And I told him as, as lovingly as I could. I was like, Kojin, you're doing Chanyang or we're leaving. We're leaving, right? He's like, okay. And then I went back to do Chanyang. <laughs> and then I looked back and he's still like, just not participating, right? Not participating. And so I went back there. Okay, well, let's go. We got the whole family. Like, we're leaving. And so later in that day, uh, my, my son was very distraught. He was, he was upset. He was, he was pretty sad because he wanted to well, be there, but he also felt, you know, like... Like he, he made a mistake and, and he felt really uh, kind of guilty, I think, from, from this experience. And keep in mind, I was as cool as I could. I was like, like, we got to leave. Like, we're not, you're not doing Chow we're going to leave. And then he was kind of crying later about this. And then my wife, Hitue, she, she talked to me. She's like, aren't you being a little harsh, right? We're all in the car together talking. And she, she mentions to me, she was like, aren't you being a little harsh? And I looked at her, looked at my wife and I was like, honey, Number one, I'm not angry. And number two, if I don't teach this to my son, no one will. Nobody will. And that's the heart of the teaching. Is like, I'm the, I'm, I'm the parent and I will take the authority of the parent and I will teach my children even if they don't like it. But I know with 100% confidence that I have to build a solid foundation of trust and intimacy and unity and respect with my children. And I know that no matter what I say, they will receive it with, with love and grace because I've built that foundation. I spend every single day, every evening with my children, separate rooms. My, my daughter has one room. My son has one room. Our baby's staying with us, right, in our room. And I go to each of their rooms and I lie with them for sometimes up to an hour, 30 minutes to an hour. I will lie with them and I will ask them, how was your day? What was your highlight and low light? And I will laugh with them and I will listen to them, whatever they want to talk about. I will laugh with them. I will hear about their adventures playing Legos and watching that show cartoon that they're watching, right? Pokemon, all this stuff. And I will listen with with curiosity. And I, as the primary focus being, I'm building a foundation of unity and trust and respect for each other so that they know when they go to sleep 
for whatever, however long, 8, 10, 12 hours sometimes because they're children, they will know while they sleep, I am loved by my father. Somebody out there loves me. And that is how people experience God, right? And so I prioritize this every night with each child individually. I'll sit with them, lie with them for sometimes up to an hour just talking. Why do I do that? Because it's a foundation of love and respect. And on that foundation, I know I can teach them well. And no matter what I say to them, they will take it to heart, right? And so taking back to this, this idea of vertical and horizontal to you all, you might know parents or yourself even that focus a lot on the horizontal relationship, which is being friends, being loving and caring, which is great and ph ph phenomenal. And the result is that children know that they're, they like being with their parents, right? They love being in their presence. But the cost of just focusing on the horizontal is there's no standard in their family. There's no education. Many times children are all over the place. You have maybe like six children. One of them is blessed. One of them is, you know, out in left field. One of them is, you know, living at home. One of, they're everywhere in terms of their own life of faith and lifestyle. It's because there was this but none of this that's an extreme example another example may some of you may be aware of maybe amongst yourselves is too much of the vertical which i would say <clears throat> is more un is more common in our own faith is too much of the teaching which comes in the form of like let's do hanukkah as much as possible let's read as much as possible let's pray new spiritual conditions let's go to champion all that which is great and fantastic and awesome but if you're lacking that foundation of trust and unity and respect for each other, then your words fall on deaf ears because it's not received. And so when you talk about the blessing, it's just like, why should I listen to you? Why should I listen to you? Because they're seeking that relationship of trust and intimacy. They're seeking that and they want that. They want to be able to receive what you're saying because if they didn't care what you said, they wouldn't react. Think about it like that. If they didn't care about your words and you at all, they wouldn't react. They would just be like, oh, you're some random person, I don't know. But the reason that it hits hard when you talk about these things and that they have an allergic reaction, it's because they care about your relationship and they're seeking something. And what they're seeking is a relationship of trust, all right? What your father said in his autobiography, let's bring this back to true parents, right? One of the last chapters, He's talking about True Mother. I believe the chapter is called uh, Inner Beauty or something about True Mother's Inner Beauty. And she's, he's talking about all of True Mother's just difficulties and pains through raise, raising the children and them passing away and just the, the difficult course she's had to have as, you know, as True Mother. And then Father says at the end, he says, the most important thing in a relationship is trust because that is how unity is built and that is how two become one. And so people focus endlessly on unity as the goal, but unity is a byproduct actually of a trusting relationship. If you have trust with your parents, with your couple, then unity will naturally manifest because that is the result of having trust. And so when you talk to your child about matching and blessing and say, let's say for example, you propose a possible matching candidate, you know, and if you have a trusting relationship, your child will go, oh, interesting, like why does my parent think this is a good idea? I will listen to this because I respect and trust this, this idea. Let's talk about this. If you have a disunited, dis un mistrusting relationship and you offer an idea, what happens? <laughs> it's like, you know what you're talking about, I'm gonna do what I want, right? And on the flip side, let's think about it like this. Maybe your child has a recommendation. Think about it like that. If your child has a recommendation for a match, if it is a untrusting relationship, a, a disunited relationship, your child will offer to you and you will say what? That's a bad idea. I don't like that idea. No. And then the child will say, well, I'm going to do what I want anyways, because you don't trust each other, right? <laughs> Interesting. But if it's a trusting relationship and your child recommends or suggests a proposal for you in a trusting relationship, you would say, interesting maybe I don't agree with this but I'm going to look into it with genuine curiosity maybe there's something I'm not seeing and a child would say maybe there's something I'm not seeing I'm curious to understand and listen to my parents right that's a trusting relationship right there that's based on unity or un united relationship based on trust right so those are the 
the two uh, frames and perspectives that I hope are helpful for you guys. They have been really helpful for me uh, as a child raising, being raised in this faith, but also uh, as a parent of children. This is how I'm raising my children. Number one is that we have to absolutely make sure that we're going to the core of our faith, which is actually not the blessing, all right? The blessing is the product, the byproduct. It is the manifestation of the work that we do internally, okay? On that foundation, the blessing will be fruitful and beautiful and we will multiply naturally. But if we have a, a situation where people are getting blessed, right? It's not ideal, but it's not the worst thing in the world, right? Let's say people are getting blessed without really a desire to create a blessed family and teach those children about the blessing, then what's the situation we're left with is that the lineage is missing. You might have love, you might have life, but you don't have lineage. Of those three, which is the most important? Love, life, or lineage? Because you're smart, you remember Father talked about lineage being the most important because it encompasses love and life. So if you have people that are just getting blessed because their parents want them to, or because they're afraid of the disappointment of their community, their parents, and their friends, and so they just get blessed, but they don't have a foundation of understanding why God made this blessing in the first place, what is God's heart about, and I want to deeply, personally create a blessed family. If they don't have that, what are they gonna do? They're gonna have maybe one kid, maybe two kids. They're gonna raise them in an interesting culture, right? They're not gonna teach them anything substantial about the blessing, unfortunately. I would say that this is not the worst thing in the world, but is it really what we are striving for? Is it really the, the goalpost that we're aiming for? No, it's not. What we're aiming for is two individuals that fully understand as to the best of their current understanding what the blessing is, and on having a vision and desire to create a blessed family, which implies to have children, as many as possible, <laughs> and to raise those children inside the blessing and teach them important things. That's the ideal, that's the goalpost we're aiming for. And how does that happen? It starts with really honestly a, a foundational relationship with God and understanding of your parents, like you all have and had when you first joined this faith and when you received the blessing. It was not like, ooh, I'm excited to get blessed. I wanna be in a relationship, right? Which of course is a beautiful, innate desire. But it's, but it's more so fueled by, I wanna do this because of how much I understand and how convicted I am in what we're doing here. And the second perspective that has been really helpful for me and for others is focusing on creating a vertical and horizontal balance relationship. You could think of it as a internal external, or you could think of it vertical horizontal, that 90 degree angle we're talking about. And you can't have one without the other. You can't teach without love. You can't love without teaching. And the mistake that too many parents make is trying to just love or trying to just teach but you can't do one or the other, you have to do both. They're both necessary. And if you feel confused as to maybe why, if you're in a situation where you're, you're confused why your children are reacting or not reacting a certain way towards the blessing or towards faith, it's probably because of that vertical horizontal relationship, right? Are there other factors to consider? Yes, spiritual factors, environmental factors, the, the environment in which a child grows up school environment, internet environment, huge, huge stuff that I won't get into here. I have a lot to say about that, um, a lot to say about it. I would say that uh, internet culture is more, more impactful on people's lives than school culture, but nothing is more impactful than family culture, than parents' culture. So yes, you can point fingers at the school system, you can point fingers at the internet and Satan and say, oh, it's because of this, but if you're ignoring the fact that the greatest contributor to the success of a child is not the external environment, but rather the home environment, the parent, mother and father that they have is the greatest indicator of someone's success, far beyond anything else. Not which zip code you grow up in, not how educated you are in, not how much money you have, is who is your mother and father, which are by far the greatest privileges you can ever have in humanity, is a loving father and mother. So if you choose to ignore that fact, that your home environment is the greatest indicator of someone's success and still point fingers at everything else and other people and, and not take responsibility, you'll be eternally confused because you won't know what to focus on. You won't know, understand what's going on. 
but I promise you the guarantee that I will make to you guys. I try not to make many promises, but the promises, the promise I will make to you is that if you focus on the internal work, the root issue, and focus on your relationship of trust and unity with your child, with genuine curiosity on your end, like being curious, like why is it that you don't want to talk about faith or God? Like I really want to know and get to the root of it and work on your own ability to, to give unconditional love, to experience that. The promise is that you guys will move forward. You will progress. And it will not be a fruitless effort. It will not. Okay, you guys can do it. If you guys need more content like this or videos like this for you guys' parents, let me know. Um, it's not my main focus. I'm really mostly focused on uh, helping single people that want to receive the blessing and feel stuck or blocked or unconfident or lacking or insecure in some way, shape or form. Those are the people that are I'm, I'm reaching right now and focusing all my efforts on. Um, but if you're a parent, and uh, let me know if you need more content like this because it's uh, something I've thought about a lot and it's something that I talk with a lot about people. So, okay, lots of love to you guys. Hope it's helpful. God bless. Take care.